All right, guys, today we have the Groveview JQ818C Wi Fi projector. This is a 1080p projector. Full disclosure, they did send this out to me for review. They didn't tell me to say anything or ask me to put any funny stuff in the review. This is going to be my honest opinions. And I'm going to go ahead and unbox it. I'm going to take it for a ride for a day or two. We'll come back and talk over the specs. We'll talk about the pros and cons and whether or not I recommend this. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing. Looks like it's not sealed or anything. We'll just take this top off. So in the top, looks like we got, we get an HDMI cable. We get your normal wall adapter. Let's go ahead and pull it out here. All right, there is nothing else in the box. We'll set that to the side. Let's go ahead and get this out of here real quick. Looks like I have it upside down, no big deal. All right, we also get a remote. We got your usual composite cable adapter in case you want to plug some older video game systems and whatnot. This also supports Miracast. Let's see the projector itself. All right, it's gonna troll me here a little bit. That's all right. That's pretty nice. All right tag up front shows you a little bit of the functionality let me get that in the view for you guys all right let's take a look here here's our front lens and power here's our side adjustments right here looks like look our fan filter hookup yep typical for most projectors nice to see it on this budget one here as well our power hookup a couple hdmis we've got a couple usb ports we've got audio and headphones and an audio audio video jack uh, let's see, fan out the sides. All right, guys, cool. So what I'm going to do is take this Groveview Wi-Fi projector for a spin here for the next day or two, try it out with my kids, get you guys some B-roll footage. And I really want to pay attention to how hard it is to set it up, moving from room to room, you know, with the manual adjustment. We'll see how bright it is as well. All right, guys, so I'm going to take it for a spin, and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, guys, we are back. I've been using the Groveview Wi-Fi projector for, oh, almost three days now, two and a half or so. And I'll have to say up front, guys, I am pleasantly surprised at how fast this is to set up going from room to room. We'll talk about it in a little bit. I'll show you guys a setup. We'll demo it in action, and we'll go over the pros and cons as well. Let's start with the specs real quick. This is a 1080p projector with 4K content support, 9,500 lux brightness, a 12,000 to 1 contrast ratio, 50 inches to 300 inch screen size, and you can actually go a lot smaller than this as well. We'll see that later on. Uh, you have a zoom level from 75 to 100%. The LED lifespan is 100,000 hours. This has both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi support. Features Bluetooth 5.0, two HDMI, two USB, a 3.5 millimeter audio, and a standard audio video jack. Dual stereo speakers, five watts each. Very wide focus adjustment and a plus minus 15 degrees on the keystone adjustment. This has a touch screen panel with a remote control. The retail on this is $249, but it's $199 everywhere. The Amazon link that I'll have in the description will have it for $199. And this has Miracast and AirPlay support. So now I'm going to cut off to some footage of how to get this set up and a little demonstration with using it with the Z Fold 3. And then I'll show a little movie night footage with me and my kids having a little fun with this projector. And then we'll come back and do the pros and cons and whether or not I recommend it. All right, guys, now we're going to go over the uh, setup and just a quick overview of the Groveview Wi-Fi projector. So the first thing you want to do is remove the lens cap. All right, it just sits on the front. You just pull it straight off. All right, then the power button is lit up in red. You just press and hold that for a couple seconds. It's going to turn on here. Here you can hear the uh, ambient noise that it puts out. It gives you an idea of it's just floor volume. Let's go ahead and let this load up real quick. All right, we're at the intro screen here. All right, so this is what it's telling you what to do for the uh, Miracast situation if you want to use your phone and whatnot. So let's go over the adjustment sliders real quick. So the front knob is a focusing adjustments knob here. Let me go through it and focus in and out. Old school, right? But it works pretty good. I don't have any issues with it. The knob right behind it is a keystone adjustment, which basically takes the image and goes forward and backwards in case you're at an angle. Underneath the device, you'll see we have an angle adjuster too. I have it to where it's kind of shooting up a little bit, right? Because we're on a table and I don't want it shooting the image down on the bottom of the table, right? So there we are at the introduction screen. We have a couple different setup screens to go to. If we press and hold the OK button, 
That'll bring us to the main system settings. Here we can pick our language, our Wi-Fi settings, our Miracast, our AirPlay mode for Apple, local update, online update, software versions, and all that good stuff with the back button. We also have the projector button up here in the top right corner. We can press that to switch from Miracast, Home, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, AV. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Let's see. Nope, that's it. So we can get out of there. We'll go home. All right, so the home screen is going to take you to this, right? Or we can, if you have movies, music, photos, if you have like a USB thumb drive plugged in and whatnot, you can be able to pick through each of those and it'll load up the corresponding files. I don't have a thumb drive plugged in right now. I'm doing everything off my uh, Fold 3. But uh, let's take you to the other settings that they have here. All right, so we go into that. So this is pretty cool. This lets you like fine tune the actual display settings, right? So we have different picture modes. So let's go over here. We have uh, different sound modes as well. And we have different settings as far as like 16 by nine, the projection mode, we can set up our Bluetooth, do a software upgrade and whatnot. But if we go back here to the picture mode, let's see here, if we go down one, uh, you'll see here we have a few different modes. If we click OK, so we have standard dynamic bid and user. The user mode lets you fine tune each of these on your own if you go into it. So you need to see here we can adjust the contrast, brightness, color, tint, sharpness, and zoom. Let me show you the zoom level real quick. So this is kind of cool. This allows you to adjust out further and then come back in. You see it's getting bigger. Go back up to zero. So if the image is too big and you want to shrink it down some to make it sharper, you can use this zoom functionality. Then we hit the back arrow to go back out. Let me show you how easy it is to like connect a device and actually start using this thing. So let's go here, work to the home. What I typically do is I'll just hit the projection key right up here and I'll go down to Miracast, click OK. All right, so that's going to put you in this Miracast mode. It's ready to go. And then on my Fold 3, down in the settings icons, I just toggle down here. I swipe down and go to Smart View. All right, and give it just a minute. It's going to load up all the devices. And this one is called the Dual Cast. Uh, looks like 1BA4 is what mine is showing as, but you'll see it as Dual Cast. You just want to click on that. Start now. Just like projecting to any other screen. This is kind of how it's like if you're doing it from your computer too, right? So if you're pressing Windows K, you can just choose this as a wireless device to project to on your laptop. So here we are, we can see the screen. I'll just go ahead and go to my YouTube channel. We'll load something up real quick. You hear now the audio is coming from the device. Give this ad just a second. Cool Jackson wallpaper. This one's for you, baby. Hope you appreciate it. All right, so let's go to the right, more guys, towards the beginning this here. This thing is epic. This is a parallax wallpaper. There's what it looks like on the screen. Let's go ahead and crank up the volume so you guys get an idea of what, this, what its audio capabilities are like. Just look at this. Look at the moon coming into view. You have full control where you can turn it. I mean, if you're, you've been around the Android game for a while, you've seen this before. You had to have seen this wall. Plenty loud. Plenty loud for a small to medium-sized room. Um, as you can see here, the picture looks pretty good. Let me adjust the keystone just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's make sure we're sharp. Blurry there. Looks pretty sharp. All right, so I'm gonna cut the lights real quick. All right, guys, I think it looks pretty darn good. All right, so this is the uh, Groveview Wi-Fi projector in action. Oh, I've also forgot to mention too, in case I didn't before, this does spit out audio to your Bluetooth speakers too, if you wanna do it that way. All right, guys, well, that's your setup and just a first look at the Groveview Wi-Fi projector. All right, kids are just watching some kids shows with it. Projector's doing good. I'm just shooting it up against the side of our blinds. I've always liked that effect, what it looks like on the blinds. So. There you go. Very cool. Just mirroring this from uh, my Galaxy Z Fold 3. Just some two kids, chilling. Audio is pretty good as well. All right, guys, we are back with the Groveview JQ818C Wi-Fi projector. So you saw some footage of it there. Let's go over the pros and cons real quick. Let's, uh, let's start with the cons this time. All right, one con, no batteries for the remote. Typically, we see batteries come with remotes. Didn't come with this one. You're going to need two AAAs for this one. 
Another con is that a lot of these projectors will come with their own screen, like a 100-inch screen. They're usually kind of cheap, right? They get the wrinkles in them. They're not a high-quality screen, but they'll come with something. You don't get one included with this one. So unfortunately, you'll have to source your own screen. Whereas like you saw in the demos that we showed just a little bit ago, it works totally fine up against your wall. None of the walls in my house are white walls either. They have a little bit of color to them, gray, blue, this and that. It shines just fine on them. So maybe that's why they didn't bother because of that 9500 Lux brightness rating. And the third and final con that I have with it is this. Let me grab this into view. Comes with a very short power cable. This thing's only like six feet long. You're gonna to wanna to definitely just keep an extension cable with it pretty much at all times. Let's go over the pros though. So it has quite a few. Uh, the main pro that I found, and I was pleasantly surprised with this machine, is how easy it is to focus using the focus. Let me move the remote here. How easy it is to focus with the focus reel and the keystone adjustment. I mean, it literally takes just a few seconds tops. Uh, you know, really three or four seconds. So going from room to room and using this projector was a lot easier than I was anticipating. Um, another pro that I noticed right off the bat was how bright this screen gets. It is extremely bright, especially if you don't stretch the image too big. You know, you keep it around the 100, 150 inches instead of trying to reach that big 300 inch screen. Uh, the other thing too is for this price at around 200 bucks, it's nice to see that it's true 1080p with, four con with 4K content support. I also like all the ways that you can interact with this device, right? So you can, like for example, with your iPhone, you can plug in your lightning cable directly in to one of the USB ports in the back. This has display over USB, so you can go ahead and cast that way. You can use the AV cable to plug into like old school video game system or anything that uses those old composite cables. Plus you can find all kinds of adapters to interact with this AV input. So you have a lot of abilities by having that input available. The headphone out jack is nice if you wanna use line out speakers. Plus you have Bluetooth out if you wanna hook this up to a soundbar. So that's pretty cool as well. And overall, just my favorite thing about it is the ease of use. I mean, I had my Fold 3 connected to this thing within 60 seconds. I didn't even look at the manual. I just, I'm used to seeing the projector button on projectors like at work. I pressed it, I picked Miracast, and I turned it on my Fold 3. That was it. So you gotta love that. So I mean, you, this thing's pretty much idiot proof. You'll be up and running with this thing within a matter of a couple minutes. Do I recommend it? At the $250 asking retail price without a screen, I think that's a little steep. However, like I've been mentioning in this video, you'll find this at $200 all day long. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth 200 bucks, especially for the brightness, 1080p, all the different support too. You know, interacting with Apple, and Android devices, as well as your PC, any other device you can hook up and think of, really. This will do it for you. So, all right, guys, I do recommend it. I like it. Thank you so much, Groby, for sending this out, and uh, I appreciate you sending out a quality product. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching.